Well, hey, everybody. I'm Bill. And I'm Elizabeth. Live simple. Live free. And we are here finally able to spend some time planting our garden. Yeah. So this is <clears throat> relatively new to us. We did some gardening about 30 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and we haven't really done any, any since. I know a lot of you are very excited about seeing what we're going to do. We're not coming from a perspective of experienced gardeners in any way. So we're just uh, doing a lot of book learning, but also Barry and Molly have done a lot of gardening and they're going to be here with us to help yeah. us, uh, yeah. you know. They're already a lot of help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what are we doing? We are going to be doing raised beds gardens and we're planning on four of them, four feet by eight feet. Um, <clears throat> we don't really have any concept of how much that will produce. And since we're just starting out, we figured we'd start with that. We may very well add more in the future mm -hmm. when we see how, how well this goes. But anyway, that's our, that's where we're starting. Four beds, four feet by eight feet. Um, and we're going to raise them. Why? Well, because, um, I can't kneel. Yeah. And so, um, we're going to, we're going to raise them. Um, and I will just have a ball working in the garden. It's just going to be up high enough now that it'll be easy for me to get to. Yeah. Also, these are intensive beds. And when we did garden before, it was intensive beds. And they're nice because there's real deep earth there for the plants. Um, and But um, they're planted so close together that weeds are generally not a problem at all. Right. So. And she's been asking me for a long time that she's been wanting to garden for a long time. I whether, love it. Whether vegetables or just flowers. But she can't, you know, really <clears throat> do it well if she has to bend down. So she's been asking me for a long time to do something raised so that she can do that. So she's pretty excited about it. Yeah, this, I'm very excited about it. <laughs> yeah. So I read through a book called a Square Foot Gardening, uh, which is very helpful. Uh, a lot of good information in there. Uh, if you're interested in the book, it's in our uh, Amazon store. Mm -hmm. listed down below and so that's what we're going to be doing we're also going to be doing some hugel culture which basically means just taking old uh tree branches and and that have fallen, logs you know, and just... stuff like that that are yeah dead in the woods and throw them in the bottom before we put the dirt in that helps a lot with uh not only nutrients but also holds in moisture better as that uh begins to rot down underneath of the plants and so, that, that's just how things would naturally be growing right yeah so that's our plan. Um, now there are many different ways to do raised beds. Uh, you can buy them. You can see some here that they look very nice. You can buy them, you can build them. Um, and I've been really thinking about what I want to do here and I'm kind of reluctant to use just regular wood because it'll rot. In a couple of years, it'll rot and all the dirt will fall out and I have to start all over and have a mess. So you could use uh, pressure treated so it doesn't rot, but I'm very concerned about having the chemicals from the pressure treated wood in the dirt that where I'm growing the, the vegetables. Yeah, pressure, so pressure treated wood isn't as dangerous as it used to be, but I still don't really want it in the food. Right, so I think what we've decided to do is actually build it out of cinder blocks because we plan for this to be a long-term thing, semi-permanent yeah. kind of thing. So we're gonna do it out of cinder blocks. And we have a uh, subscriber who's also a member of our Facebook group who uh, just recently posted a picture of his and this is Robert Witt and I thank you for these pictures of his garden. Ours it's, will look something like this. It's so nice. Good yep. job. Yep. <laughs> so uh, we are also going to be building cages above the uh, each bed uh, to keep out the deer and the other critters and uh, what we'll do is we'll build a frame above it and either a hoop with, with netting on it or an actual wood frame with you know screening around it to keep the deer out. If we do that, then I'll have to build doors into it so we can get into it. Uh, the other option would be to put a fence, a tall fence all the way around the whole thing. That would keep out the deer, but it wouldn't keep out other critters and bugs. And uh, Yeah, and, and you know, Barry and Molly know what is going on around here, so they, have, they can let us know how we can protect um, the plants from the local the local things that right. you deal with certain bugs and pests that are always here And you know Barry was saying that if we build the cage over top and we put small mesh on it screening on it and fasten it all the way down around and that'll help a lot with Controlling those pests mm -hmm. and things so yeah. We're relying a lot on his local knowledge, but uh, so that's what we're going to be doing 
And, and uh, Molly's <clears throat> let me read some of the um, really good books that she's got too about the different plants and right. when to plant them and it's, it's been really helpful. Now we've started the process. Yeah. And I'll just show you right here what we've got. So here's the beds that I have started with. We actually use Barry's backhoe to come in here and remove the topsoil. I'm doing it this way because it's on a hill and for the cinder blocks everything has to be level. So I'm leveling it all out and then I'll put the cinder blocks on there and then we'll put in some some wood, some you know, tree branches and stuff for the hugel culture and then fill it with topsoil and uh, compost and several other things and then we'll put our, our four beds right in there. Um, I just want to mention, I'm sure I'll hear questions about it, yes that's our shed that I built last November and no it's not finished yet. <laughs> We've had other priorities that were bigger priorities than finishing that. It's dried in it's nice and dry inside, I just still need to put the siding on it. So I just thought I'd mention that. Now what we're really excited about is all around the outside edge of our property, one of the things I've really wanted to plant is, is uh, raspberries and blackberries. And we've just discovered that all the way around the entire edge is all raspberries and blackberries already, already all mixed in together. And. Uh, they're, in fact, they're, they're prolific. They're almost becoming a pest that is hard to control. They're so, <laughs> they're so prolific. So we're excited about seeing exactly what we're going to uh, have once it starts to, to leaf out and bring fruit. That's awesome. But uh, we're planning on doing a lot of, of uh, canning of, of fruit like that as well. There's a, people are going to notice that wire there. That was the old wire that they don't use anymore, right? This wire right here. Yeah. yeah, it was when we dug it up, we discovered that, and that was an old, the old telephone communications wire that went into the house that's no longer used because now it goes overhead. Yeah. So. I just know somebody would be wondering about that. So, okay. So that's, that's where we've started, and uh, that's just sort of a snapshot. And I will have a complete video of building the beds. And we will, of course, document everything we're doing. We'll have videos about planting and videos about the uh, building the cages on top and all that kind of stuff. So um, you'll be going along with us for the ride you know, mm -hmm. as we learn a couple of neophytes learning what we're doing with, with raised beds and all of that. So what are we going to be planting? Yeah, I've got, um, you know, there's a, uh, we have a little thing uh, that we're going to be planting the seeds in to get them started early. Um, I've got, I'm starting to get some of the seeds here. They're all organic. Um, and uh, the, some of the earlier things that I'm going to be starting really early on is broccoli, cabbage, and cauliflower. And then I'm going to get some of my, I want to get some herbs going. But anyway, we'll be planting a whole lot more than that. But I'm getting this started and it'll be going into the little growth pods. Yeah, we'll be starting within the next couple days planting the seeds, you know, inside. Yeah, and, to get them started. Uh, hopefully by the time we're, they're ready to go, I'll have that bed finished and oh, we yeah. can plant them. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. We're finding good places to get the soil and all that, you yeah. know. Um, I can tell you just real quickly here, I've got a list on my phone um, that I have put together of, uh, you know, the different things that we're thinking we might want to go ahead and go with. And um, uh, I have some limitations. Um, as to what it's okay for me to eat. Um, the nightshades are tomatoes, potatoes, peppers, eggplant, um, anything like, like that. Um, and I have to be careful with legumes, which is beans, peas, um, you know, green beans and all that stuff. And I love um, edible pod peas, oh goodness. But anyway, um, we'll go lighter on those because uh, I won't be able to eat them, but I wouldn't be able to be able to have access, so they'll be they'll be lighter. Yeah, well, some of the things that are pretty much standards in the garden will either be not in our garden or just a few plants, just because yeah. she can't eat them. But I will have, um, you know, uh, greens is just a really important one, and, and our sons come up with a pretty cool way to grow the greens. I'm looking forward to showing you guys that, but lots of different kinds of greens. And then, um, you know, I want to really want to go into a lot of root veggies, uh, beets. I can have sweet potatoes. I really enjoy turnips uh, and parsnips and so I'll see if I can maybe tr try growing some um, parsnips or you know we'll, we'll, I'm gonna try that. Carrots are fine. I want to grow onions. I'd like to grow some leeks. Um, I might start growing my own garlic 
and then I want to have squash um, lots of good winter squash and summer squash um, I really want to see if I can grow some watermelon and maybe even some pumpkins we'll see how much room I have for all that and then um, you know broccoli cauliflower Brussels sprouts cabbage I can grow cucumbers I'd like to start some asparagus and rhubarb it takes years for those to really be pickable you know a couple of years at least but then they, they come back and right. I'd love to have some of those. And so the only other thing would be kind of figuring out how I'd like to grow some herbs. Um, so those are the basic, kind of some of the basic things I want to try to work into these beds. Mm -hmm. um, and it, they hold a lot more than you would normally have in a four foot by eight foot space because everything's grown concentrated and there's not big spacing in between them. Right. And, um, so, <clears throat> and I'm really excited to realize there's so many natural berries growing around mm -hmm. here. We want to get some fruit trees then, but it's better to plant them in the fall, apparently. Um, but th we've got berries all over the place, and Bill has wanted a um, mulberry tree for ages. And I grew up with a mulberry tree in my front yard, and I would climb up into the tree and spend hours just... <laughs> <laughs> eating I love mulberries. I love mulberries, and my mother used to make mulberry pie and mulberry jam and all that kind of stuff. So I really wanted a mulberry tree that I wanted to plant, and it would take a few years to to start producing. Yeah, it has to get bigger. And Anyway, apparently right across the street there's a very big mature mulberry. And it may just be growing there wild, but if it's if it belongs to somebody, we're going to go up and just ask it. Maybe we can occasionally have some of the fruit from it. And uh, I would imagine they're not going to mind. Those things really grow a lot. Yeah. And so and we'll... The, as far as Barry knows, he's never seen them out there harvesting the fruit. So we, We'll check with him yeah. and see. Yeah. But anyway, maybe he'll have access then um, to some mul mulberries. It's like me trying to get my own dogwood tree for so many years, and now I've got this beautiful mature one in the front. Only God could have done this. <laughs> Which so is cool. not yet starting to blossom. People are asking about that. Your rose bush out there is starting to leaf out. It's leafing out a lot but now. So far, there's no activity with the dogwood, and I think you go out and check it every few days. Don't oh, I you? do. <laughs> I, I check it all the time. I've got some um, bulbs popping up out of the ground. I don't know for sure what everything is. It looks like some of them might be tulips. Um, things are greening up now. Um, the rose bush is starting to get a lot of leaves on it. And um, I just, you know, I'm just watching every day to see when those little, you know, because the flowers come out on a dogwood before the leaves do, which is one of the things I think they're so beautiful because you, you see them growing in the woods and stuff and it's like lace just floating in the air, you know. So, um, yeah, I'll, um, I'm watching very carefully for that. But anyway, back to the garden. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's about it for what we're doing with the garden are for our initial plans. Yeah. And like yeah. I said, we'll take you along all along the way. We'll be doing videos about everything you know everything that we do every step yeah and all the mistakes that we make of course as well as everything else <laughs> and just with kind of the way things are going right now we're going to try to be sure we get the rest of our seeds pretty quick here um because yeah. it stuffs well you know the stores are just kind of emptying out like crazy so we're going to try to make sure we you know get our seeds so that we can get things planted right so and then we also don't know anything about canning, <laughs> but we're planning on. Right. <laughs> also, with Molly, learn. with Molly's help, she's done a lot of canning. So, yeah. if some, I've also had quite a few people ask, "Can you do canning videos? I want to learn how to can." Well, we got to learn how to can. <laughs> right. Right. So yeah, we're going to be working on that. Yep. And, uh, so I'm going to buy jars to can with. Yeah. Why don't they call it jarring? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's a serious question. Yeah, if you're going to use jars, why, why isn't it? I don't know, jarring just sounds kind of jarring. <laughs> I don't know. Never thought about that question before. Yeah. Oh, wow. See what you learn? Yeah. When you watch our videos, it should be called jarring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was definitely jarring. Hashtag jarring. Hashtag jarring. <laughs> I don't even know anything about tweeting, but I know what hashtag means. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness oh. all right everybody thanks thanks for watching <laughs> we'll, we'll uh, try to really include you guys in this whole process as it goes along yep. and um so yeah i'm grateful to have some room now to do some stuff like this it's really exciting all righty live simple live free okay you'll be blessed yeah love you guys we'll, we'll see, see you next time we'll see you soon okay you ready <laughs> here you go we'll see you soon well, okay we'll, we'll see, see you, you soon, soon. <laughs> he's goofy today Goodness, you're being jarring. <laughs> <laughs> okay.